Hi, did you know that it takes typically about 50,000 lines of code to make a phone app? A million lines of code to store 18,000 pages of printed text. Five million lines of code to make the software that runs the Mars Curiosity rover. 14 million lines of code to run the software on a large passenger jet. And 24 million lines of code for the software on fighter jet. But today's modern uh, average high-end vehicles take approximately 100 million lines of code. That is a lot of information to be processed within a vehicle. So the question then is, why do these vehicles need so much information? Where is the information coming from? Where is it going to? And how does that affect us as collision repair technicians? So today in this video, we're going to discuss onboard diagnostic systems. Let's take a look at the brief history of the OBD systems. In 1969, Volkswagen produces the first scannable computer in a vehicle. In 1975, the Datsun 280Z model utilize an onboard diagnostic computer for their fuel injection system management. Uh, in 1980, GM implemented an assembly line data link, ALDL, to communicate with the vehicle's electronic control unit, which is the engine control computer. In 1988, the Society of Automotive Engineers recommends standardizing these systems of onboard diagnostics as everything so far have been proprietary for each manufacturer. Uh, that finally came true in 1996 as the OBD2 system becomes mandatory in North America. All vehicles sold in North America from 1996 onwards uh, met this new standardized criteria. In 2008, the ISO 15765-4 um, standardization for signaling is mandated as a variant of the CAN bus system, which we'll talk more about later. Does the complexity of the modern electronic systems in these vehicles have you feeling down? Don't worry, I'm here to make sure that you're not feeling blue by the time we're done. So let's have a look at some of the words we're going to be dealing with today. Uh, so one of the abbreviations is DLC, which stands for Data Link Connector, uh, sometimes referred to as the OBD2 port or OBD port. It is the area from which we can connect a a scan tool to the vehicle for our communication diagnostic purposes. It utilizes a standard 16 pin connector. The next one is CAN which stands for Controller Area Network followed by the term BUS which is a form of data communication amongst separate controllers. You put them together you get a CAN bus system. These are not unique to automotive but it is something that we do utilize today. Well, essentially what it is, it's a, it's a system of electronic controllers with a very unique and sophisticated form of communication between them. The next term is module. So a module is an electronic device such as a controller, computer, or microprocessor. These terms are thrown around. You may even hear it referred to as a unit or control unit. OBD, onboard diagnostics. So that's the older style of system prior to 1996 which was replaced in 1996 and later models with OBD2, the second generation of onboard diagnostics. The last term you've heard me refer to, the SAE, Society of Automotive Engineers. So they have a lot of implementation within this as well as so many other sectors within the automotive industry. So let's have a look here at an OBD system. So this right here is a very simplistic system uh, that could be found on a modern vehicle today. So here we have the data link connector, that's the connector we'll connect our tools to uh, communicate with the vehicle with. That's connected then to the ECM, the electronic control module or engine control module. There's a whole bunch of different terminology that's unfortunately not that standardized within the industry. That ECM in most vehicles is going to communicate with a separate BCM, uh, body control module. The body control module is then a larger control module that's going to communicate with a bunch of smaller modules. In this case, this one is drawn as having a communication line with this one right here. And this one could be the user interface module. And that could be a module that controls things that the user of the vehicle controls, such as the radio, uh, may control some items on the dashboard, instrument cluster area there. 
and that user interface module may control another computer, such as this one, a radio control module, which then may have a separate control module for satellite radio and for navigation. On top of that, uh, this system in here may have its own communication separately with an HVAC, so a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, or that system could work more directly off the user interface module. Additionally, we have our SRS, which is our airbag system. Our airbag system is going to be controlled typically directly from the body control module, or it could be controlled in a different manner of communication depending on how the vehicle manufacturer has that set up. On the side of the ECM, the ECM is going to have a whole bunch of different modules they control. Uh, so in the ECM, it may control uh, a TCM, Transmission Control Module, which then in turn may also control a TCCM, Transfer Case Control Module. Uh, then there's also a separate ABS module for the brake system. And then there could be another one for the traction control, so a traction control unit perhaps. But amongst all of these modules and the communication, there's going to be sub-items, so sensors and such that go with it. So just as an example, in the ABS system, we're going to have wheel speed sensors, one wheel speed sensor for each wheel that is going to communicate with the ABS module, which will then communicate with the uh, ECM. And all of these can control or talk to each other through this uh, system. So the CAN bus system will utilize on modern vehicles the ISO 15765-4 uh, system of signaling and communication. And that is these lines here that communicate between all of these modules. It is a very high-tech system that utilizes digital communication for very fast and simplistic communication that doesn't require a lot of wires. Prior to 2008 on vehicles that did not use this CAN bus system, these communication devices had to have more wires and it was more of an analog communication, which could then created uh, a lot of issues and uh, that could be issues with speed, for example, or broken wires, which could cause problems. So the CAN bus system allows faster and more accurate communication amongst all these modules. So when you consider that million plus lines of code, that CAN bus system is what allows that code to communicate amongst these modules so these modules can do what they're supposed to do with the information from all these sensors. So that's what we need to know as auto body technicians within the industry. Thank you. Before we go, I'd like to quickly show a few tools that can be used to communicate with these systems. The one you see at the moment is a simple code reader. It will read basic codes from the ECM. The next one I'm showing here uh, is a full-on scan tool. It can scan and program many modules, but it has limitations in that it usually cannot do every single module. So the OEM tool from the dealership is the best tool for that. An alternative is the next one I have here, which is an AirPro tool, and this tool acts as a remote diagnostic or pass-through scan tool, meaning that someone at a remote location will do the scanning with the OEM software through this particular tool. Uh, that will ensure that we can actually access every single module. That's it for the video. Uh, this video does supplement some previous videos and there will be more on scan tools in the future. Thank you for watching.